right, so now that we know how to take two simple derivatives, it's time to start combining these derivatives to finding the derivatives of more complicated. So the first rule we'll learn about derivatives is called the sum rule. It basically says that if you have a function that's the sum of two other functions, the derivative is the sum of the derivatives. Okay? And where this comes from is, is pretty much basic uh, common sense you know, about physical relationships between actual things. So let's say you have a train. Okay? This is my train car. Um, and it's moving you know, forward 60 miles per hour relative to the ground, let's say. All right. And you got a guy running along the top of this train car, like he's in an action movie. And let's say he's running at five miles per hour relative to the train. Okay. Then the question is, how fast is he running relative to the ground? Okay. Or how fast is he moving? Right. He's running five miles per hour on top of the train. The train itself is moving at 60 miles per hour relative to the ground. So his speed relative to the ground is the sum of these two equals 5 miles per hour plus 60. Right? Because he's going in the same direction as the train. The train's carrying along at 60 miles per hour, so we just add on this extra speed to say what, how fast is he moving relative to the ground. That gives us 65. Right? If he was, let's say, running the other direction, like this, here's my train. It's moving this way at 60 miles. Hour. And let's say my little guy is running. Oh, that's even worse, but I cannot really tell. He's going that way. There we go. Now he's going to the back of the train, five miles per hour. Right? So his speed would then be the subtraction of speed relative to ground. Would then be 60 miles per hour forward, 5 miles per hour equals 55. Okay, this is. Okay, so we're saying, you know, forward is positive, backwards is. Okay, so then his speed relative to the ground would be 55 miles per hour. And as he runs towards the back of the train, his speed is technically slowing down relative to the ground. Okay? And if you think about the derivative as just the Sorry, if you think about speed as the derivative of function, then this makes sense that if you're trying to find the speed, then you would just subtract or add these two. Okay, so the sum rule says that if f of x is equal to g of x plus h of x, right, then f prime of x derivative is equal to the derivative of g plus the derivative of h. Okay? Where does this come from? All right, so intuitively, you know, speed should add or subtract, depending on if they're going in the same direction or not. But where does this come from mathematically? Mathematically. All right, if you think about the derivative coming from this, you know, rate of change, taking the limit of that average rate of change, you say, okay, well, f prime of x, that's the limit as, let's say, delta x zero of, you know, f of x zero plus delta x minus f of x zero at x zero, let's say. And let's just leave it at x, as x. x, right, over delta x, right? This is the change in f over the change in x, but f is just the sum of these two functions, g and h. So really we could write this as 0 of f of, right, g of x plus delta x plus h of x plus delta x minus f of x, and f of x we replace with h of x all that over delta x, right? And so on top we have g minus g and h minus h. We could separate this out 
from f x zero g of x plus delta x over delta g of x plus delta x minus g of x over delta x plus h of x plus delta x minus x over delta x. Right, and so we can basically split this up into two separate limits. Right, delta g over delta x plus limit delta x zero of delta h. Right, and so that's where we get this g prime of x plus h prime. Right, so we're just splitting those up nice and clear. Okay, let's do an example. Based on functions, we know how to take the derivative out. Let's say our f of x is equal to x squared plus uh, 3x minus 1. Okay, so we learned how to do derivatives of x squared last time, and we also learned how to do derivatives of linear function. Right, so this would be our g. This one here will be our h. Right, so this is really f of x plus g of x plus h of x. So then that means that f prime is going to be g prime of x plus h prime. Okay, so we saw last time that if g of x is x squared, then g prime of x is 3 times x. So Right, and we saw last time that if you have a linear function, you have h of x is 3x plus 1. The derivative is equal to the slope of that line. That just gives us 3. Okay, so then our derivative, f prime, is going to be 2x plus 3. 2x plus 3 is going to be the derivative of this function. Right, so taking derivative of the x squared term, taking derivative of this linear term. That just gets okay. Um, we could do you know different one, just a little less messy. We'll just do it nice and clean. Let's say f of x is now going to be I don't know two linear functions. Yeah, three t three x one plus five x six. Okay, so we can write that out as okay, f prime can be this g of x h of x, right? So g prime of x h prime of x. Nice, that gives me derivative of the first is just the slope of the first. That's three. Derivative of the second is just the slope of the second, that's just 5. That gives me 8. And that's the same thing as combining these, right? So doing 8x minus 7, and then taking the slope. Right? So either way you do it. If you can combine them before, then you do that. Or you can take the derivative separately and then combine them. Either way you get the same exact answer. It's ridiculous. As well. Either way it works here. Okay, and after the third video, we'll, we'll go over how to take derivatives of just general polynomials, and so I'll say kind of the constant rule, and then we'll do things like, you know, we'll do this in another video, but we can do stuff like 3x squared minus 2x plus, right, we'll do that in another video, I just want to keep these short.